I'll be reviewing Encouraging Authenticity and Spirituality in Higher Education by Arthur Chickering, John Dalton, and Lisa Stamm. It was published in 2006 by Josie Bass, and it has 358 pages. Authors Arthur Chickering is a distinguished student development theorist and scholar. Among his many achievements, Chickering has been recognized with a variety of awards for his developments within student affairs and student development theory. In his work, Encouraging Authenticity and Spirituality in Higher Education, Chickering has collaborated with student development theorists and scholars John C. Dalton and Lisa Stamm to embark on a journey that explores the needs of students to engage in classroom experiences both authentically and in manners that explore spiritual growth. Context of Book the call for this book came from a place of concern over a rapidly developing narcissistic culture, as well as a desire to craft a community that is responsive to significant social needs. Chickering and colleagues proposed that we can curb this narcissism by employing pedagogical tools that encourage students' authenticity and spiritual growth within the curriculum. Part 1 Chickering and colleagues in the first portion of their book make the argument that we, as a society, have become numb to the social problems we face. There seems to be, they say, a public opinion that education has proven to be f more for private benefit rather than for the greater public good. They argue that such should not be the case. Chickering and colleagues state that education is a grave public concern because of its potential to equip graduates with the skills needed to address mounting societal problems. They further argue that students enter college, in part, out of a desire to explore who they truly are as human beings and their role in the world. Therefore, classrooms and other collegiate experiences can be used to integrate concerns for social issues and hopefully help decrease social problems in the future. Part 2 in the second part of their book, the authors argue that colleges, both two-year and four-year, need to add greater emphasis to issues of spiritual growth, authenticity, purpose, and meaning. They support this by noting that the life of the mind is not separated from the life of the spirit. In their arguments, however, they recognize that these topics, spirituality and authenticity, are much contested in collegiate circles. Colleges, once founded in religiosity, have become secular. As a result, students have had a sense of fear and disclosure around the need for spirituality and authenticity in higher education. One way the authors defend their argument in favor of spirituality as a legitimate focus in public higher education is to make very clear that spirituality is in no way the same or synonymous with religion. The conflagration in the minds of scholars is one of many reasons it is hard to address such issues without resistance. Despite this, the authors maintain that these things are crucial both in the lives of students personally as well as for the greater public good. These opportunities not only enable students to cope with stress and fragmentation within college settings, but also provide students with opportunities to self-reflect on their behavioral habits and mental models. Given this, Chickering and colleagues call upon professors to utilize pedagogical tools to accomplish this. They require that these pedagogical tools be supportive of intellectual inquiry and open dialogue while, at the same time, provide opportunities for students to engage their prior knowledge and lived experiences. Chickering and colleagues also note the importance of providing opportunities for students that include service learning and integration into curricula. By integrating students into the community, we not only allow for students to engage in deeper learning, but we also provide opportunities for students to learn community boundaries, engage in civic involvement, to create a heightened sense of social responsibility, and to understand the interdependency inherent in any community. There are also important implications for professors that come from the arguments of Chickering and colleagues. For instance, engaging students in this manner requires that professors be as candid and as open as they can about their own orientations, motives, prides, and prejudices. Furthermore, professors need to be able to evaluate their motivations and to be willing to share those as a means of validation for their curriculum choices. Part 3 in the third portion of this book, the authors draw farther on their claims, suggesting that there is a need to use education to extend beyond the norms of teaching basic principles and to delve further into the discomfort of true thought. 
they recognize that this is indeed going to be a complicated process, which will call upon educators to continually build these ideas and to plan sustainable efforts. We can begin, they say, by creating safe places and classrooms where all feel included. Furthermore, the authors note that the importance of educators operating from a place of leadership that is different from the business model of leadership. Rather, they contend that as educators, there is a need to transcend the status quo and operate out of our own personal vision and conviction in ways that encourage and empower others. Strengths. The most useful portions of this book, we feel, are the myriad examples of institutions already attempting to integrate and establish the concepts put forward by the authors. Not only do these examples provide legitimacy to the claims made by the authors, but they also grant educators a starting place for thinking about how they can implement these ideas into their own curriculum. The examples are based on many different forms of higher education, allowing many avenues of change for those interested. Essentially, one can usually find a model that will give a place to start, no matter what form of higher institution one teaches at. Challenges. While this book draws their points with precision, we worry about the receptivity of educators in spaces of higher learning. As the authors discussed, there is a great tendency to dismiss ideas of creating spiritual selves within academia. Thus, professors from a strict objectivist perspective, despite the many valid points the author makes to the contrary, might see this work as not relevant to higher education. We would argue that a dismantling of this objectivist perspective is necessary before movements such as these can be instituted on a broader scale. Conclusion this book effectively outlines places for development in higher education that are currently not addressed to their full potential. Specifically, this book calls for a transformation of higher education from a place that engages in transactional learning into a place of transformation for the whole student. For us, this book accurately sheds light on flaws we have experienced ourselves in collegiate experiences. In our experience, there is a great need to divert away from curriculum that is based solely on rational empiricism and to move toward teaching the whole student. While we are concerned that suggestions for integration of spirituality and authenticity will take a long time to gain widespread support, we have come to see, not only in the author's examples but in our own educational experiences, aspects of these topics being implemented. True to the author's claims, these experiences have allowed us as students and future educators to self-reflect in ways that challenge us to make meaning of our lives and to, and to discover who we are. If these ideas continue to gain ground, we feel they will, indeed, create positive change for the greater social good.